All right, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you might be watching this. I just want to take some time to expound a little bit of a passage I referenced at the end of the sermon this morning. Um, from Matthew 24, um, verse 42 says, Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of their house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake, would not let his house be broken into Therefore you must be, also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find uh, so doing when he comes. Truly, tr truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, My master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servant, and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will covenant, cut him in pieces, and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this is a part of the Olivet Discourse, um, and this is a part of of Christ teaching about his second coming. And, and I believe that this is speaking specifically about the second coming. This isn't talking about the rapture. This is talking about exactly the time we're talking about in the Revelation 16 through 19. And so Christ is getting ready to, to he is sharing with these people about being ready. And I've always thought it was interesting to think about why it is that he shares with um, shares these things when you know the God's word written um, and the church is the one that reads God's word today and the church is the one that is focused on God's word today why why write about being ready about his second coming if our end times theology is is right why give so many warnings about that and I think the one explanation that I I understand the best is is just to remember that people are reading God's word even during the tribulation period. We know there's going to be a lot of people come to know Christ. We've already looked at that. So during that tribulation period, there's going to be a great number of souls that are saved. Yes, many will be martyred, but not all of them. There will still be people searching. And so as we read this, imagine being a believer that's been saved during the tribulation period, that picks up God's word and begins to read this passage. Now, I, I hope that would change your understanding and thinking a little bit of that passage. Stay awake. Believer of the tribulation period, stay awake. Now, let me just say as well, another little thought here, um, the message is similar to we as believers today is to stay awake. We see that reinforced again through Paul's writing. No doubt about it that we as believers today need to be awake and ready and, and looking for the return of uh, the call of the Lord, um, the trumpet of the Lord sounding. Um, no doubt about that. But this is not talking about this. But Christ is still addressing people in this passage who are believers or at least at the very least Jews who are about to become believers and so when you read through this uh, first off he says you don't know what on what day your Lord is coming um, now obviously the tribulation period we can narrow it a lot down more a lot more or narrow it down a lot more than we are we can right now in that it's at seven years and, and it'll be a pretty close time but even still, what Christ is saying is, be ready, because you don't know when it's going to come. I'm going to return. That battle's going to happen. You don't know exactly when it's going to happen, though. And I think that's a really interesting, uh, really, really interesting point for, for us to understand about um, this period of time. That even during the tribulation period, it's going to be easy for a believer to kind of fall into that trap of becoming a little bit complacent. Wouldn't that seem almost impossible at this point in time? 
just because of everything that's going on, I mean, you look at what we talked about this morning, although it's a, a minor inconvenience, I think, maybe, to have the Euphrates River dried up, the fact that all the armies are gathering seems like a big deal. You think that'll get the attention of everybody. But that's Christ's point. Pay attention. Be awake. Be alert. And then he gives us that first thought. If the master of the house had known part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake, would not have let his house be broken into. That just makes common sense. I talked about that this morning. If I had time, I hope I did. <laughs> but then he says, you also be ready. And then he says, he gives us this parable about this, this faithful and wise servant. Now, what's, what's interesting is right before all this, um, Christ talks about it'll be as in the days of Noah. Well, what were the days of Noah like? That's where the therefore comes from. He said, you know, the people of Noah. Well, what happened with Noah and the flood and the ark? Well, Noah knew, the, knew it was coming. Noah warned the people that it was coming. Noah asked them to repent, to come onto, this, onto the ark, to be saved. They refused. They mocked. The door was shut, and it was too late. The same will be true during for the day of the Lord. Christ has even had his angels proclaiming his goodness and saying, repent. Remember that just a little bit ago? We just looked at that. Saying, repent. God's grace is good. And yet people still mocked. God gave opportunity for people to understand who he was by giving, giving all these horrible plagues. Saying, repent. Time's coming. But people instead mocked. And so when we look at that and we understand that context, and Christ says, we just like that, there's going to be a time where it is too late. You know, you can't be one of those people that, that thinks you can just put it off and say, okay, I'm going to know the end times really well so I can and just, you know, wait until the very last minute of that tribulation period to trust Christ and turn to him. Well, here's a few holes in your theory, if that's your plan. If your plan is to kind of wait it out, see if it's really all true, and then go for it. Number one, you're missing out on, on a huge blessing, and that's living for Christ, following God's word, because we, again, know that God's ways are the best ways, period. So you're missing out on a lifetime of living your best life. I don't want to steal Joe Osteen saying, oh, man. Anyway, um... But the idea that by us following God's ways, it's living the best that we possibly can. And you're missing out if you're trying to avoid that. You're missing the point. Number two, I think as we have seen throughout this tribulation period, there's a lot of people that die. If you try to hold off and wait until just before Christ returns to repent, you may not make that. Number three, that's just really foolish. None of us knows the day or the hour that we're going to meet our, our, our Savior or the one that we should have asked to be our Savior. So repent today. Today is the day of salvation. So for these believers that are now trusting in him during the tribulation period, they're reading this and he, God is telling them, Jesus is telling them, through his written word, hey, stay awake, be ready. You know, and I think part of that is not just being complacent, but having that mindset of just like, I can't do this anymore. This tribulation is too hard, too heavy, too strong. I can't do it anymore. And when you think about that, you know, during this 2020, people have made a lot of memes and a lot of jokes and everything else about that whole idea of, of what we're up against. 
And if your mindset is one of, I just can't do it anymore, you, you really are, we're, we're missing out. This is when, I was just telling somebody recently, you know, right now, we as believers in this really dark spot, this is our opportunity to shine brightly. You know, and I, I, I use this illustration, I think before for you all, but, you know, I get up in the middle of the night because well, I don't have to very much anyway, but if I do, or if I'm coming to bed at, late at night, all I have to do is to tap the side of my phone and turn it on and the little light that barely shines at all lights up my path. Why is that? Because my house is really dark. And the smallest amount of light really shines brightly. I don't have to turn on a flashlight. I just need a little bit of light that shines brightly. And folks, right now, we as believers have an opportunity to shine really brightly. Because things around us are pretty dark. We have that opportunity to share Christ, show his love, exclaim his goodness, proclaim what he has done for us on the cross. So we have that opportunity. Anyway, I don't want to get off topic, but that's such an important point. We should never have that mindset that this is too much. I, I just can't do it. No, this is our time. And I think that's what Christ is saying here to these believers of the tribulation period. When he tells them, he says, I want you to be that faithful and wise servant. And who is that faithful and wise servant? Well, he says they're the ones that when the master comes, he finds them doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. So what's the message to the New Testament or the the uh, rapture, the tribulation believers? What's the message to them? Do what you're supposed to be doing. Do exactly that. Because when you do that, you will be that faithful and wise servant. And then he makes a contrast in verse 48. The wicked servant says to himself, my master's delayed, begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunkards. Well, when that happens, there's going to be a price to pay for those actions. Now, it's pretty steep in this parable. because He says he's going to chop them up into little pieces. Put them with the hypocrites, which at this time was just another name for the Pharisees, those who were religiously thought they were good, but were far from God. So the point that Christ is making is that we, not we, the believers of the tribulation needed to be doing what they were supposed to be doing when Christ came back. And I, I think that just works for all of us. We understand that, you know, I don't know about, you know, as a educator now and, and uh, working in that, <laughs> that type of field, it is funny when you walk out of a room and then you come back to the room to see what your students are doing. It's amazing just the walking into a room, what students will, how they will change their behavior. But because all of a sudden you see someone changing their behavior, that means you know that it wasn't very good before you walked in. Right? I mean, that's just common sense. It's kind of like when a wrestling match turns into a hug <laughs> with your brothers. As soon as the parents see the hug, they know something was up. <laughs> Not that I ever did that. But th that idea is that Christ says, when I return, I want to see that you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, when, when I go and step in a classroom, I want to see my teachers teaching, doing what they're supposed to be doing. I want to see my students learning, doing what they're supposed to be doing. We, as the church, when Christ blows that trump to call us to himself, we want to be doing what we're supposed to be doing. And so Christ's point to, in this situation, is that, that we as believers be ready. 
The point to these particular believers is that they be ready for the return of the Lord. Now you think about what we talked about this morning. Here, they have been through so much. If anybody had an excuse just to say, I just want to be left alone, I just got to survive this. I don't want to draw any attention to myself. I don't want anything. I just want to, like, hide. But instead of that, Christ says, do what you're supposed to be doing. Whatever I've called you to do. I would argue that during the tribulation time, what the Christians are supposed to be doing is the same thing we're supposed to be doing right now as the New Testament church. They're supposed to be preaching. They're supposed to be serving and loving others. During this time, one of the things we're supposed to be doing is caring for Israel, one of the things that will get them killed. Do you think maybe that's what he's talking about? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Who then is that faithful and wise servant whom his master set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? So that idea that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're serving who they're supposed to be serving, that's where the blessing is. The punishment is when we decide instead of to be serving to be abusing. Well, you can see that application with what we talked about today with the Jews and the people's response to the Jews. And we know that's going to get worse in the tribulation period. And so we, we see that. And we see the hypocrites joining him. And so I, I hope that you'll, you'll understand that Christ is speaking to these tribulation believers and reminding them to be ready, to be watchful. He's coming. I find great hope in that. I find a great encouragement in that. And I can't imagine reading that passage about, I'm coming, be ready, if I was one of those tribulation believers. You know, for us, that very thought of, I'm coming to call you home. You're going to get up on I here. That's pretty exciting. And we should long for that time. We should long for that day. Even so come, Lord Jesus. And as we get worse and worse and we see things getting goofier and goofier, and it's going to get worse, People calling good evil and evil good is, is going to become worse and worse. Just this week I read an article of people in Minneapolis, the very ones that cried out, defund the police and we don't want the police anymore and shouldn't have as many of them. They don't need to be doing this. We can do this with community leaders and community patrolling. We don't need police officers are now actually had a, you look, you can look this up, Minneapolis had a city council meeting and they basically gave the business to the police chief for quite a, quite a while because he didn't have enough people responding to calls. Folks, you can't make that up. That's, that's just sad commentary on where we are as a society. The city council says, we don't want you working for us anymore. We'll take your money away so you can't have anybody anymore and then gets angry with you because you're not there. We see what's going on with the churches all around us. It's going to get worse. And so the response that we have is, what are we going to do? Are we going to be ready? Are we going to still be doing the right thing, being that faithful believer? And I know this is talking to the tribulation believers, but I think the application is still there for us as well. Are we going to be ready? What are we doing to show that we are faithfully performing the work that God's called us to do as we wait for our master to come get us? 
We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. There's a lot of talk about that right now, by the way. A lot of people prognosticating that we're not going to be here by the end of the month. Um, I will still argue until the Lord comes back that we don't know. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. Christ will come. He will call us to himself. We look forward to that time. But right now we don't know when it is. We longingly wait though. And so I hope you will await with a longing for heaven, with a longing for Christ to come and take you home, but also with a desire to be faithful to what he's called us to do right now. And we look forward to those believers one day as we're in heaven. We see those believers on, on here on earth faithfully performing what God has asked them to do. It's quite a job. During the tribulation time, it's quite a job. If he's asked them to do it at that time, boy, we've got our work cut out for us right now too, don't we? But not nearly like they will at that time. So let's rejoice. Let's rejoice in our great God who gives us hope, who gives us that promise of his coming back for us. And I think it gives us some peace just because we know that his plan's good. I hope you got that from this morning. <laughs> Even through all the chaos of all of that. And all the people coming, all the armies marching, and, and Israel probably looking like they're going to get destroyed, just wiped off the map one more time. <laughs> but God shows up. Jesus Christ. Looking forward to covering Revelation 19 sometime soon. All right, I hope that's a help to you. I hope that's just a reminder of what we're talking about here. And uh, we look forward to Christ coming back for us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. But you're a good God. Thank you for loving us. Help us to be ready. Help us to be watching. We pray for those saints, even during the tribulation period. Uh, Lord, we're thankful for the promise you give them. Um, Lord, it's amazing to see your grace for us just help us to be ready we pray these things in your name Amen. thanks